I do a quick just intro announcement real quick? Is that, yeah, no worries, no rush. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena here in Jacksonville for the first and second round. We're about 10 minutes away from the Yale players coming in, and then we'll be followed by the Yale head coach. So 10.20 is the scheduled time for the Yale players to join us. 10.35, the Yale head coach, James Jones, will be with us. And that entire time, the Yale locker room will be open to media. So uh, come join us in about 10 minutes for the Yale players. Thank you very much.
All right, folks, again, welcome to Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena for today's press conference and practice day. And we're starting today with the Yale student athletes, uh, Alex Copeland to my left, your right, Mia Oni and Blake Reynolds with us today. Well, uh, if you guys just get close to the microphones, we've got microphones out here going around the uh, media center. Uh, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. And uh, let's start off with the first question. If you have a question, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. And uh, by the way, uh, we'll start with Gene here in the middle. Locker room is open right now for Yale, uh, and the Yale head coach will come up right after these guys here. Let's go right here in the middle. Right here. Okay, uh, name and affiliation, please. Uh, Gene, for, Gene Fournette from the Florida Times Union. Uh, any, for any of you that want to answer this, could you just talk a little bit, uh, give a little bit of insight to people who, who don't get to see Ivy League basketball, whether on television or whatever, and you know there might be a perception about the, the skill level. Cornell came here in 2010 and, and got to the Sweet 16. Could you just talk a little bit about how maybe the, what the outside perception of Ivy League basketball may differ from the actual product? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, think it's, I think it's getting better every year. Um, I think the athleticism and, and, and the talent in the league is getting better, um, you know, every year as we go. And I think a lot of people don't, don't get the chance to see that. But, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think you know. I think we'll bring that to this turn to, to this first round here. Um, just just showcase that that talent and athleticism that we do actually have, and that that high level of basketball that's in the Ivy League. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Next question, right here in the middle. Uh, Barry's coming your way. Just a reminder: uh, no cell phone video photos are allowed in here, but no video, please. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Clayton Freeman with the. Four times union. Um, you know, th the Ivy League history in Jacksonville has been pretty noted over the years. Cornell getting to the Sweet 16, um, Harvard having a, giving a major um, scare to UNC a few years ago. Um, what uh, um, is that something that the guys talk about? You know, maybe a little bit of a good luck charm factor with with Jacksonville and maybe a chance to sort of carry in a little. Ivy League legacy down here? What do you think, Alex? Uh, not exactly, but, but we definitely know that um, you know, teams from our conference have been able to come into the tournament, just like uh, Blake and I did uh, as freshmen um, you know, a few years back against Baylor. And we, you know, teams from our conference have been able to come here and have success. Um, and so we're not afraid of anything here. We're, you know, we feel confident. Um, we know the teams before us have done it. We feel like we're capable of doing it. Um, and so we're you know, excited to be here and get a chance to, to showcase that. Next question, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone. Let's go here on the right, Barry, uh, your left here. Name and affiliation, please. Uh, Will McCormack, Yale Daily News. Um, before you even knew you were playing LSU on Sunday, um, how familiar were you guys with Tremont Waters and his game, you know, him being from New Haven, um, getting recruited by Yale? Yeah, we hadn't heard from you yet. What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> um, I think we were all we all knew who he was, and some of us had played with him and played against him in different parts. He comes back home for summer a lot, so um, we know he's a quick point guard. He's really talented, and yeah. Another question. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you uh, in the back, please. Yes. Uh, Reggie Chapman, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, you guys are three of, I think, four starters that are in double di that average double-digit points a game. I mean, what is it about you guys offensively that makes you so dangerous? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, um, I think we got a really deep, deep team, especially on the offensive end. You know, we got a lot of guys that can uh, can contribute, and a lot of guys that can put the ball in the hole. Um, and I think you know it can be a different guy any given night that can hurt you. So I think that's what makes our team uh, pretty special is that we got a, got seven, eight, nine different guys we can throw out there any night that can that can really make a big impact on the game. On the aisle in the middle, Mark Long with AP, Alex for Alex and Blake. You you kind of touched on this earlier, but the 2006 ex, 2016 experience against Baylor. Uh, how different does this feel than that? And how much? more confident are you being that you've been on this stage 
and played some, you know, two of those teams? Yeah, um, it, it definitely feels pretty different. I think as freshmen, um, I didn't actually get on the court. Blake did, and he hit a three against Baylor, which is pretty awesome. Um, but uh, I think there was definitely an element of kind of feeling like you were just along for the ride a little bit. Um, and as much as I enjoyed that, I think, you know, I, I have vivid memories of being on the bus leaving March Madness and saying, okay, you know, I got to try to get back here before I graduate. Um, and to be able to do that as, as one of the leaders of this team feels really special and just feels like, um, you know, a bit of a dream come true. I think that coming here and seeing it before, it kind of put that dream into your mind. And we were lucky to have really great seniors and, and really great leaders before us that were able to kind of bring some clarity to that vision. And I think when you can have a dream combined with um, a little bit of a, a, a plan and a vision and, and a blueprint of how to do it, I think you can you know, try to do something really special. Here in the middle, yes, Gene. Uh, Gene, Gene Fernet from the Times Union. This is for all three of you. Could you please tell us how heavily you were recruited coming out of high school, whether you got any athletic scholarships from somebody, and if so, why did you ultimately choose Yale? Mia, you want to start us off? <laughs> um, so at first, I, w I didn't have any Division I offers. And then I committed to Williams College Division Three school before my senior year. Played out my senior year. Um, then after my senior year, a lot of Ivy League schools, Patriot League schools contacted me. And I committed to Yale after, after like, June or July after my senior year. The admissions was closed, so I had to go to prep school for a year at Suffield Academy. And then I joined Yale for the 2016 class. Uh, as a oh, hit the mic, please, Gene. Okay. How challenging is the financial commitment for your families? Because I'm assuming that, you know, I, other than need-based financial aid, that not every single dollar of your, of your education is paid for. Go ahead, Alex. I think that um, when you sign up to, to go to a school like Yale, um, it's one of those things where it didn't really, even as just like 18-year-olds making a decision, um, I think something that, that uh, our coaches tried to, to, to really kind of drive home with us in the recruiting process was that it wasn't a four-year decision. Um, you know, there were definitely sacrifices that we'd have to make, whether it was financial or you know, maybe not being like, you know, quote, unquote, a high major school. but um, you know, we we're making a 40-year decision, you know, something that, that was an investment in, in our futures and, you know, having an opportunity, one, to be on a stage like this, um, you know, but also to have, like, one of the best, you know, academic um, experiences and, and education that's, that's around. Uh, any other athletic scholarships for you? Yeah, I had a couple. <laughs> Blake, what about you on the far end? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, there was definitely, you know, um, other interests. The, the, my junior summer, that's when I actually first really started playing, uh, like summer AAU basketball and started getting some exposure. Um, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a Midwestern kid, so um, a lot of, like, Missouri Valley Conference schools and um, just schools in the Midwest areas like that. Um, and then when Yale reached out, you know, uh, I thought that was just an incredible opportunity. I didn't really, you know, know much about the Ivy League or Ivy League basketball at the time. But um, yeah, once I got up there on campus and got to know the coaching staff and, and kind of what the program was about, that's, you know, I decided that was the right decision for me. We've got time for a couple more questions. We'll go here in the back and then down here in the front. Thank you. Uh, Reggie Chapman, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, you guys are a high scoring offense in the, uh, in the Ivy League. LSU is one of the high, most high scoring offenses in the SEC. What is it about them that you've seen that makes them so difficult to guard? And um, what kind of game are you trying to expect? More of a shootout, or do you think you guys are going to try and make it more of a slower game? Go ahead, Mia. You want to start us off with that one? Yeah, LSU has a great offense. They have a lot of a lot of key pieces to their offense. They're pretty balanced. Um, they're not fairly deep, but they are pretty balanced with who they play. And um, I feel like we're kind of similar. I feel like we're a little deeper. We're also a very balanced team. And we both try to play in transition a lot, but we both can slow it down to run the half court set. So it should be a fairly interesting offensive game. Anything to add, guys? You all good on that? Perfect. Uh, down here in the front row, in the middle. Jeff Duncan with the Times-Picayune in New Orleans. This is for Alex. Kind of 
piggybacking on that last question, there's a school of thought in these kind of games um, that you slow it down to play a uh, quote unquote high major, like you say. You all play up tempo. So you you gonna run with this LSU team tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Um, we feel really confident, one, in um, our style of play, but also the, the actual talent level of the guys we have on the court. Um, and so we're, we're going to play our game. I think that, you know, we're, like any game, we're going to see how, how things are flowing, how things are going. Um, you know, if it starts to suit us better to slow it down and really, you know, kind of grind them offensively, then, you know, I, th I think we'll try to do that in the half court. But you know, if we're having success in transition, you know, I, I feel like we have guys that can run with anyone. Perfect, guys. Thank you very much. Good luck to you tomorrow. Appreciate it. The Yale locker room is open, by the way. Uh, the head coach, James Jones, will be here in just a few minutes. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I've got Coach Jones here with Yale. Uh, again, same as before. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We've got about 15 minutes or so, Coach. I know you're excited for that. So glad to have you here. Welcome to Jackson. We just want to start us off with, uh, you know, the way your season, the regular season, ended to get into the tournament here. Um, your second time being in the NCAAs, correct? Yes, it is. So you get a little closer to the mic too. We're real excited to be here, obviously. Um, we had a great end to our regular season uh, in our tournament with a couple of wins over two really good uh, Ivy League basketball teams. And we felt all year that we were the better team in the league, and I thought we proved it in terms of our non-conference, our win-loss record. And it was great to be able to prove it on our home floor uh, and get ourselves down here and in, 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 in into the NCAA tournament. All right, we'll start here on the left. Jeff, Z Jeff Zilg at USA Today. James, could you walk us maybe through the recruiting process for Mie and how he ended up at Yale? And was there ever a time where you wondered maybe if he would go elsewhere when the recruiting picked up? Well, um, I believe it was uh, after his senior year, we got a call from Robert Eichardt, who is his AAU coach, um, BTI, I believe, out of um, Southern California. And he said he had a kid that uh, we should really take a look at, and he sent us some film on him. And uh, I took a look at the film, and the first time in my career I ever offered a kid after watching the film. One, and it wasn't even a game, it was like a highlight, but he had done some things in the highlight tape that were just so exceptional. Um, you know, I was born at night, but not last night, and I could figure it out, right? And uh, so we offered Mie, and he and his father flew out to Yale on their own dime. And uh, they spent, they were supposed to spend like a, a half a day with us, and they got mixed up in traffic, and I believe they visited Columbia and Yale and Dartmouth on the same trip, or Princeton might have been, whatever the case. So they only spent like an hour and a half at Yale. So we sat down and we talked, and um, I had a good feel for them, and I thought they had a good feel for me. Shortly thereafter, he had gone to uh, Stanford's elite camp, and they didn't offer him an opportunity. And after that, uh, he committed to Yale. And that was somewhere in, in April or May of his senior year, and uh, then in July, he went out and he played uh, in Las Vegas in uh, Fab 48. And uh, he played better than anybody I've ever recruited in a, um, in a summer tournament. Um, they played against Thorne Macon's team from Canada. 
and it was uh, Mie and a kid, Cohen, who's at Lehigh, were the only Division One players on their BTI team, and they ended up beating them. And Mie was absolutely tremendous. And Johnny Dawkins, you know, came up to me after the tournament or after one of the games, and he goes, oh, guys, you got a good one. I made a mistake on him because he was just that good. And um, his father um, is committed to education, and um, Mie is committed to education. And um, although that other people came in recruiting him, they had committed to us and they uh, kept their commitment because of the people that they are. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you uh, right here in the middle. Coach, could you just talk about the challenge? Once you got, had, had gotten the job, could you just talk about the challenge in the Ivy League? I mean, we all, everybody's very familiar with the traditions that Princeton's established there, that Penn and Harvard's had their run. How tough was it to, you know, to be, to come in and sort of crack that and sort of become the, the standard bearer, if you will, for that league? Well, I was an assistant coach for Dick Kuchin for a couple of years. And while being at Yale, I understood um, the power of the name and what it was all about and uh, what a great institution that it is. So I was at Ohio University as an assistant coach when the job opened up and I interviewed. And in my thought process, after talking to people, they were wondering why I would want to go to Yale. Um, out of 310 Division I teams, Yale was ranked 308 when I took over the job. Uh, and they would ask me that question and my answer would be because it's Yale. Um, I felt like if I, couldn't, if I could not convince young men that we could win and that they were going to get the best education in the world, well, then I was probably in the wrong business. And I felt that, you know, Yale was such a, a great place academically, and I felt really good about what we were going to do basketball-wise, that we could convince people that uh, we could make special things happen. And in getting to it, what the, the biggest challenge we had is that we had no basketball history. There's, you know, you walk into our gym, there, you know, there wasn't 40 banners up of championships. There wasn't guys who, you know, several guys who played in the NBA or whatever the fa fact may be. So we had to start our own history. Um, and we have, and we've done a great job with that. And I, I've had wonderful assistant coaches who have gone out and beaten the bushes and found young men that of quality academically and athletically to help us win championships. And we finally got our program to the point where we're going to be good every year. And I think that's the challenge, right? We, we've been fairly consistent, you know, uh, since I've been the head coach at Yale, and this is my 20th season, we finished in the top half of the league 19 times. And the only time we didn't was that first year when we finished five and nine and we were in fifth place. That's the worst, the worst we've ever done since I've been the head coach. And that consistency has been pretty good, but we don't want to be consistent. We want to be great, right? We want to win the league most every other year. And, and um, hopefully we continue to try to bring in quality student athletes like Mia, Blake, and uh, Alex and have a chance to win every year. Next question here in the middle. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach. Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV in Baton Rouge. I don't expect you to get into your game plan here at a press conference, but um, you've been known for playing an up-tempo game. This might be the best collection of athletes you've gone up against, but also the, the slower tempo has given them trouble this year, teams like Florida. So how do you go about you know, doing that? Well, certainly LSU is a really athletic team. We did play Duke this year. They're not bad, I heard. Um, so that being said, we have seen, and, and this, you know, this collection of guys that, that you're talking about, um, they've, they've had some schedules over their, their four years at Yale, so we've seen some players. And one of the things I did last night was um, I watched uh, our Baylor game. Uh, it's on my laptop, and I like to look at it every now and again to make myself feel better about my life. And, uh, and I watched the game, and um, we played them straight up. We guarded a man to man in the post. We didn't switch. We didn't double. Um, we did what we normally do. And we, we were able to do that because we were good enough. And uh, I think this is a really good team. And, you know, offensively, we're a pretty good offensive team as well, right? We shoot, I think we're like sixth in the country with field goal percentage offense. Um, so that being said, uh, we want to play our basketball game. And if, um, if that's good enough, it's going to be good enough. It's not, it's not. But we want to play our basketball game, and we want to be the team. We want to be true to who Yale basketball is. And, and we're going to try to go out and do that tomorrow. Got time for a few more here in the front. Yes. Uh, Brian Jackson, WJXT-TV here in Jacksonville. I've got a local kid, Austin Williams, on your team. Doesn't necessarily get a whole lot of minutes, but whenever you call his number, he seems like he goes out there and produces. So what does that say about his character? Well, you listen. Um, we had a game against Princeton at Princeton, and um, 
we got into a situation where we needed to call his number. Um, I couldn't get some guys out of a game, and both post guys were in the game from the start to about the 12-minute mark. And if I, we normally have one post sub, and that's Paul Atkinson off the bench. And then if I would have left another guy in, they would have been in for like, you know, 10 or 12 straight minutes, and uh, that's more than I'd like to give them. So we called Austin's number, and he proceeded to go in and score a couple of baskets for us. And uh, it speaks volumes to the character he is. It's, it's, you don't know how hard it is to go to practice every day and not play in a game and reap the benefits um, and, and sit on a bench and wait for your number to be called. Um, but what you do is you come to practice every day so when your number is called, you're ready. And, uh, you know, Austin has done that for us, and uh, he's been a tremendous kid. And, and one of the hardest things you do as a coach is to manage expectations because everybody has expectations. You know, I was better than everybody I ever played against. Just ask me. Right? Um, and so everybody feels that way. And I have a locker room of guys that feel the same way. So it's important for us to make sure we make that everyone knows they're, they're vested in what we do. And just because you don't go out and score the points or get the rebounds or make the assists, you still are really important to Yale basketball and what we do. And I believe that Austin feels that way. And that's one of the way, reasons why he's able to go in the game and have him played in like six or seven, eight or 10 in a row and be able to be successful because um, he's worked hard for his opportunity and was just waiting for it. Got time for two or three more. We'll go in the back here to start. Hey, Coach, uh, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. I'm Reggie Chapman. Um, you, have, you have four different starters that are all in double figures. Obviously, Mieoni is your leading scorer. Um, for people that don't get a chance to watch too much Ivy League basketball, um, what is Mie like? And also, what is it like to be as deep to have four players that can be in double figures every night? Yeah. Well, well, Mie might be the most competitive kid I've ever coached. Um, he doesn't like to lose at anything. And he'll bite, scratch, and claw to get a win, right? He's one of those kind of kids. So that being said, it's a tremendous to have him uh, in, the, in the locker room with us because he keeps you on your toes, right? If, you, if you're not ready to go, you're going to get hurt uh, one way or the other. In any event, so it's great to have him as part of it. And having a, a well-rounded team of of guys who can score. I have basically seven starters. You know, like Azar Swain and Paul Atkinson come off the bench, but they're starters. They play starters minutes, and they're good enough to start on most every team in our league. And we're fortunate to have a really good basketball club and have those guys as part of it. And when I say they're all starters, whenever any of those seven guys are off the bench, out of the game and on the bench, I'm trying to find a way to get them back in the game. And we have some other guys, like we talked about Austin Williams and Eric Monroe, um, who come in and help us from time to time. But those seven guys are really tremendous, and it's great to have a well-balanced team where you know any one of those guys can give you 20 on any night. And as you look over our last five or six games, you know, Mie has been a consistent scorer for us, and so has Alex Copeland. But we've had other guys lead us in scoring, too. Blake Reynolds and, and Jordan Bruner have been a huge part of what, what we do. And, you know, and, and Azar Swain goes out and makes goes four for five from the arc against uh, Harvard in the championship game. So we have a lot of guys that can hurt you. Um, so it's, it's great to have that kind, of, um, that kind of balance in your offense so you can win games. Two more. We'll go here in the middle, and then you next. Mark Long with the Associated Press. Uh, you talked about the Baylor game. Do you let the players watch it, or did you show that to them? No, that's 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 a personal thing with me. I'm, I, I got it on my lap, on my desktop. Excuse me, on my laptop. It's it's on. Uh, um, I have it there, so I can watch anytime I want. And I've, you know, every now and again, I'll just take some uh, pointers from it. I I like to see what we were doing, and and how we were successful. Well, going back to that though, how much do you think just going through that experience with your three senior starters, you know, Blake and. Trey and Alex, how much do you think they that will help them yeah. going through this, through going through it again? Well, I, I think that you know once you go and you win it and you break that break that lid, you kind of believe, you know. And if you can't, it's hard to achieve if you don't believe. So I think our guys in the locker room are confident about who they are and about the the guys that are sitting next to them. So if you have a belief that you can win, it's got to start there. So there's no fear in the guys' eyes and. You know, we watched some tape of uh, LSU play yesterday, and I saw some guys kind of like, you know, twitching a little bit when they, they saw a lob dunk and Nas going up and, and tipping it back in or the dunk or, you know, Scala coming down the middle and hammering on somebody's head. But, you know, again, we have some pretty good highlights on, from our club as well, and I think there's a lot of confidence in the room, and it's derived from wins that you've had in the past. Final question here in the middle. 
Coach uh, Bobby Phil's uh, quite a legend at Southern University there in Baton Rouge, the teams he played on and everything. What's it like to coach his son, and what are some things you can share about his son to you know those watching back in Baton Rouge? Yeah, yeah. Um, Trey Phil's is perhaps one of the better people on this planet. He's the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry. I don't know if you have any daughters, but if you do, try to get his number. Um, you'd be happy to have him as a, as a son-in-law. A tremendous person, tremendous kid, tremendous basketball player, um, tremendous athlete, uh, and it's just, he's kind of the glue of who we are. Um, and what I mean by that, he, his, his task every single game is to guard the team's best player. And whether that be the one, two, or the three, Trey's got him, and everybody knows it. And to be that selfless person to go out and just to defend, because after every single game that every kid has ever played, the first question they they're asked, how many points did you score? Not who'd you stop, not how many rebounds you got, not how many assists, how many points did you score? So knowing that's gonna be the case and, and, and knowing that he's not, a, not the kid that's gonna score the most points every night, um, it takes a very selfless person to be able to go out and do that. And he's one of the most selfless, hardest working kids that I've ever coached and it's been a joy. And uh, lastly here, like I have four seniors and uh, I've taken some time here, um, most every single practice over the last, we've had like 100 practices so far this year. Um, over the last, I'd say 30 to 35, I made a point to try to have grab a smile with each one of my seniors for some reason or another, just to talk to them individually because they're gonna be gone. Uh, in a year, and sometimes you get addition by subtraction. Uh, that's not the case with these guys. It's gonna be subtraction by subtraction. Um, we, we will be lesser of a team when they graduate, and Phil is a big, Trey Phil is a big part of that. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Quick schedule reminder coming up at uh, 11.05 Abilene Christian. The uh, players will start at 11.05 and then the head coach at 11.20. And yes, the media buffet is scheduled for 11 o'clock. So get ready. Thank you. We'll be back shortly. One, two, check, check, one, two, three, four, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Check, one, two.
two, three, check, check, check. One, two, three.
right, we've got the players from Abilene Christian. They don't bang their knees on the table here. Um, uh, if you have a question, uh, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Just a reminder, no video on your phone. Photos are fine, but no video, please. Leave that for the feed in the back. And we've got about 15 minutes or so uh, with the guys here from Abilene Christian. First question, uh, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you, please. Uh, right here in the front. Yes, sir. Let's get that mic on. Hello? Oh, there we go. Nick Mantis, K-Texas News. Um, what, what has the dynamic of the team been, been like since you guys have seen Jeloni and BJ leave, and now you guys have Damian Daniels and, and Joe Pleasant stepping up? How, is, how has that changed the dynamic of the team and, and, and helped you guys to get to this point? Uh, really, it's just what we've been preaching all year, just next guy up mentality. Uh, just being ready for your moment. The young guys have done a great job, just staying prepared, staying in the gym. So it was really nothing new to us. We knew they could step up. We knew it, the talent they had. We knew they could contribute. So it wasn't really surprising to us. The dynamic hasn't changed too much. It's just new players stepping up and doing something that we knew they could do. Just make sure you can get a, a, close to that microphone as you can, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, next question, please. We'll get a mic right here in the middle. Yes, sir. Dusty Baker, KTAB News. Hayden, it's uh, good to see you on the corner there. and. Uh, a question for you, you know, obviously, as Nick had just pointed out, uh, there's been some transition towards the second half of the season. Did you ever think that you would be on this platform in small town, Throckmorton, all of a sudden here you are on the big stage in front of all of us? What, what is this like for you? Did you ever imagine this? No, I never imagined it, but, I mean, I dreamed about it. Just, oh, I thought he had a question. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's truly amazing just being from a small town, just coming from, uh, like a town with 700 people and coming to Abilene where there's 100,000 people, just that was a big change. And now coming to uh, Jacksonville, Florida to play on the biggest stage of college basketball is, is truly amazing. On the left side, yes, sir. Yeah, Max Preston, AC Optimus. Uh, guys, when you came to Abilene, you, know, you knew that ACU would be ineligible to be in the postseason for the first two years. Uh, just And now you're in the tournament as seniors. Uh, just explain the emotions and just what, what it's like finally being here? I mean, it feels amazing, you know. This is always a dream come true. Um, we preached about this in, uh, our senior, for our senior year over the summers. Um, so, like, we want to go to the NCAA tournament. We want to go play at the biggest stage. And um, we're here now, and we just got to <laughs> make some noise. In the front row on the left, yes, sir. Lee Howard from uh, CBS in Lexington. Guys, when you look at the uh, Kentucky team, what is it that stands out about those guys, and, and what do you guys have to do tomorrow night? Uh, they're big. They're athletic. Uh, we just got to block out and just play de team, team defense, and we just got to hone in on the defensive side. And just They're really big. They're really tall. Uh, they're really athletic, and we just got to stay together as a team and just push through. About you, Jaron, we haven't heard from you much yet. What do you think of Kentucky? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're really talented. Uh, a lot of guys with great skill levels. Athleticism is really the big thing we look at, and uh, they have that uh, in all five positions. So, uh, really, boxing now is going to be important. We got to take care of the ball, and uh, we just know we have to stay focused and locked into our game plan. Here in the middle, yes, sir. Jordan Huff, it's Abilene Reporter News. Um, a lot of talk about dreams come true after the the Southland tournament. Have you guys woken up, or is this still kind of kind of dreamland for you guys? Uh, I mean, we didn't woken up. Um, I mean, after the Southland Conference tournament, I couldn't really sleep. You know. Uh, I slept with the um, trophy in my hand that same night, um, but we didn't woken up. Uh, now it's time we're here to, to get to business and you know what I'm saying to work and have some fun and play with confidence. Back on the right, yes, sir. Grant Boone, CBS Sports. So, Jaron, you played with Joel Berry. Jay Frank, you played with Malik Monk and Kayvon Allen growing up. Does does the fact that you did that take a little bit? Uh, of the mystique away from, oh my gosh, it's Kentucky. I mean, you've played with some of the best guys in the world. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I mean, it's nothing new, really, it's just basketball. That's a, at the end of the day, that's what it is. I don't really have like a mystique or anything, no nerves. It's just going out there, we're hooping. So it's not really a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, it's a big stage, NCAA tournaments, what we've been working for, but at the end of the day, 
I mean, it's no pressure for us. It's just playing basketball, doing what we love, doing what we've been doing for years now. So, in the middle, on the right, yes. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, Jalen. Do you want to follow up with that? We'll get to you. Jaren, um, Jaren said, "I mean, we're just here to play basketball. You know, um, at I mean, we, I play with those guys, and um, I mean, they taught me a lot. You know, and um, they just." Here to have fun, I guess. <laughs> yes, I heard from Kayvon. Uh, he's, uh, I called him right after uh, we had the selection show. He was like, hey, man, you got Kentucky. I was like, I know. He said, a dream come true. I was like, I know, I know, I know. I said, I just got to get to work, man, you know. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Uh, here in the middle, yes. yes. Uh, Clayton Freeman for Florida Times Union. Um, for, for Hayden, I mean, you, you mentioned um, you know, coming from a small town background of, you know, what was your first impression of coming into this arena, knowing this this is the big stage here? It was it was awesome. Uh, just like you said, coming from a small town, just not getting out there. We don't even have like fast food restaurants or anything. But just coming in to this arena and just looking at the atmosphere it's going to bring during the game is going to be truly awesome. All right, another question right behind you, Barry. Two rows back. Uh, Sean Bowdy, Wave 3 out of Louisville. Um, obviously for Abilene Christian, this being the first time in the tournament, then you have this such a storied program like Kentucky. And then even Jalen, you mentioned just a couple answers ago, this being a dream come true. How does the difference between the two programs play into your mindset going into this game tomorrow? And Jalen, kind of specifically, why is this a dream come true for you? Uh, it's a dream come true because, you know, uh, you always wanted to play against a higher rank to um, schools, you know, and um, this is up there, you know, Kentucky is a great team, great program, um, great players and go, um, great coaching staff. And uh, I, I used to grow up watching them, you know, and just being out there, I'm not being out there, but just watching them and uh, dreaming about going to the K Kentucky. But this is truly a dream come true. Um, I'm just going to embrace this moment. Another question here on the front right. Yes. Nick Mantis, K-Texas. Um, Jerem, for you, this is kind of a, a homecoming, in a sense, being from Orlando and, and, and having being back in, in your home state. Um, what's it been like since you've been here? Have you been able to see family? Are you, you know, getting, uh, getting acclimated with the humidity a little bit more? Is it, is it, does it feel good to be back? Yeah, it feels great being back. Uh, everybody's been giving me a hard time because it was cold when we got in yesterday and all they say is that I complain about Texas being cold all the time like this is much of a difference I'm like all right just give it some time but uh it's been great being back I haven't got to see any family or friends yet because we've been here for a day but uh I have a lot of people coming out to the game uh tomorrow so that should be good having a lot of people who haven't seen me play in a while come out to the game and uh it just feels great being back we're hoping for warmer weather but uh we're just going to enjoy the moment and have fun while we're here we've got time for a couple more right here in the middle yes sir Dusty Baker, KTEP News. Um, so this goes to all three of you guys. You guys all play outside the perimeter. You guys shoot close to 40% there. Uh, Kentucky knows that. Um, this arena is going to play somewhat of a role, it seems. Obviously, the seats are further back, and perception may be a little bit different uh, when you guys go out to the court for the first time. Um, what, what's that going to be like for you guys to have to adjust to this arena? We really ain't gonna have to adjust. I mean, we just gotta go out there and have fun and play our game, you know. Now, um, if we wide open, knock the shot down, you know. Like I told these guys all the time. I mean, if you open, just shoot the ball. Um, Farquhar is a great shooter. Jaren's a great shooter. My whole teammates, my whole teammates are great shooters. So they just go out there and shoot the ball, have fun, have confidence. Hey, do you want to follow up on that at all? The um, the arena itself here. Yeah, uh, Jay Frank said it. I mean, like you just have to have confidence. Confidence is key in this game. Uh, just whenever you have an open shot, just take it and have confidence in it that it's going to go in. Uh, yeah, like you said, the depth perception is going to be off a little bit. That's why uh, this uh, shoot around is going to be very important for us just to get out there and get shots up. So, yeah. Thank you. Let's go front left. we we got time for two more here and then uh, one more. Gentry, that's just Courier Journal in Louisville. I guess for Jaron or, or any of you guys, what was different about the team this year? You guys improved so much to win as many games as you did. Why, why this year? Uh, I think – why it happened this year is because uh, everything we went through, uh, especially last year, we kind of stumbled towards the end. In late February and March, we didn't finish how we wanted, and the season definitely didn't end out the way we wanted to. 
And uh, I really feel like that made us hungry. We thought about that all off season, all summer during workouts and uh, practices. That was the thing that was pushing us. That was a huge motiva motivator for us. So uh, I really just think the struggles and uh, all the lessons we learned from the past couple of years, specifically last year during the stretch, is what, uh, what led to us uh, making it all come together this year. All right, we'll go to the final one here. The locker room is open, by the way. Yes, sir. Jordan Hoppett, it's Abilene Reporter News. Um, you guys are, are now a part of a lot of firsts in, in those ACU uniforms. Is that something you, you think about now, or, or do you guys focus on, on the task at hand, and kind of that'll be something that you guys think about later and, and recognize when, when all this is over? Uh, I mean, we thought about it um, all year, you know. Uh, it's close to the priest about it, about, like making history or, you know, just being there and just having fun and playing a basketball game, you know. Um, but right now, we just got to look them up to the next task and um, just be ready to lock in and play basketball, you know. Perfect. Guys, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment with the uh, head coach, Joe Golding. The uh, locker room for Abilene Christian is open at the moment. Thank you.
We've got Coach Golding here from Abilene Christian. If you have a question, as before, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, and we'll start here on the right. We'll go to the left next. Yes, sir. Nick Mantis, K-Texas. Uh, Coach, when you had that switch in February uh, with the excusing of, of, of Jeloni and, and BJ, and you see Damian and, and, and Joe stepping up as freshmen to kind of take a little bit of that load and, and help this team along, first things first, what was it like when you told the team and, and how has the transition moved into seeing those guys really step up? Yeah, we had one of the most emotional meetings I've ever been a part of in coaching. Um, it was um, um, a lot of tears shed. I mean, those guys were brothers to these guys. Um, and so uh, we played Southeastern, I think it was 48 hours later, and, got, and just got drilled. We got beat really bad um, at home. And that hadn't happened very often this year. I think it happened twice. Um, so uh, I don't think we would beat anybody in our league that day. There was just too much going on. Um, but I think uh, people that have been around college athletics, professional athletics, anything, I think in a six-month season, adversity always comes into play. Something's going to happen, whether it's suspensions, whether it's uh, dismissals, whether it's injuries. Adversity plays a big part uh, in everybody's season. And so, um, you know, when you have three seniors that you guys just talked to and a bunch of upperclassmen and some juniors that have been in this program a long time, and one of our mottos is trust the process, get better every day. You guys have heard that. And then the last one was finish the fight. We wanted to finish the fight for these guys. Um, and they did an incredible job, maybe better than any team I've been around, of handling adversity. Here on the right, and then we'll go to the left next. Dusty Baker, Dusty Baker KTAB News. Coach, uh, we had talked a little bit about building your brand and uh, just – coming here now and starting to see this unfold already. What, what has it been like for you just to hear people start to recognize what ACU is and uh, learn about you guys? What is that like for you to be a part of this and be the lead of this? Yeah, this looks a little bit different than our media room back home, Dusty, huh? Uh, <clears throat> there you go, bud. Uh, you, you know, here's, here's the deal, man. We, we couldn't have got a better draw. I mean, we're playing the University of Kentucky. You know, I mean, uh, one of the most historic blue buds, maybe the most historic blue blood uh, college basketball program in the country. You know, you're playing five star recruits. You're playing a Hall of Fame coach, uh, the best the best fan base in the country. Uh, so every time anybody the next 48 hours is going to talk about the University of Kentucky, they're going to mention Abilene Christian. So it's an incredible way for us to share our story of our university. This was the dream. This was the vision. This is what President Schubert and the Board of Regents wanted to do. Uh, they wanted to go to Division I so we could share our story of our university. Um, and, you know, my job as being the head basketball coach was to get us to this point. That's my job. That's what I did. Uh, you know, I have an incredible group of players that believed in a vision and dream, and we're here. And I want them to enjoy the ride. I want them to live it every minute. We're going to share the story of our wonderful university, and we're honored. It's a privilege to play the University of Kentucky, man. It, it's, it's, it's an incredible moment for our university uh, to, be, to be paired up with them. Let's go to the left side in the middle, yes. Coach, uh, you know, it was always your dream. You told me a few weeks ago to coach in the NCAA tournament, and you sort of did that at Little Rock, Arkansas. You played in a first four game, got beat out. Now as a head coach, you're here as a 15 seed. Just describe the emotions of achieving that dream. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a wild ride. You know, I think you have to find things in this business that motivate you. You know, what motivates you to keep on? This is a grind, man. This is, this is a hard business, especially at our level. But any level, it's tough, you know. Uh, I just haven't been fortunate enough to get any higher than this level, not as a player or a coach. Uh, so I don't know how that other level is. But uh, it, it's been an incredible run. You know, as a player, I wasn't good enough to play Division One. I. I thought I was good enough, but uh, nobody would recruit me, you know. And uh, so I was a Division Two player, but I always wanted to be a part of March Madness. I remember my dad as a little kid letting me skip school, and we'd, we'd sit at home and we'd watch games on Thursdays and Fridays. It was just something we did as a family, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so then I got the opportunity from Steve Shields at Arkansas Little Rock uh, to be an assistant coach. I owe a lot to him. He gave me a huge break in the business. Uh, and I was able to go there, and we were able to experience it um, as an assistant coach, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, we went to Dayton, which was great. I love the city of Dayton. We got beat. But here's the funny story. We were back home. I think we played on Tuesday night. I think UNC Asheville beat us, a uh, really good game, uh, beat us. And we were back home Wednesday before a lot of my buddies in the business had even left to go play their game, you know, and the tournament was already over for us. So this has been great, being a head coach, being able to lead my alma mater uh, to the NCAA tournament, being able to play the University of Kentucky and being able to experience it uh, and be, really be a part of, the, uh, of March Madness uh, tomorrow night. It's an incredible opportunity for me, and it's something I'm going to take a lot of pride in one day down the road. On the far left, yes. Uh, Jerry Tipton, Lexington Herald Leader. Uh, coach, how – uh Wanted to ask you about P.J. Washington, how prominent he is in, in the game planning you guys are doing. How impactful can he be? 
well, if he shows up to play in the walking boot and, he, and Coach Cal lets him play in the walking boot, we might have a chance. You just saw our post from Throckmorton, Texas, you know. If he takes the walking boot off, we got a problem, you know. He, he's, uh, he's really good. He's talented. Uh, he's, one of, he's one of eight problems we have on their roster, you know. They're, they're very, very talented. Uh, I, I honestly, um, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, and he, he's an incredible talent. If, if he's making shots and he's scoring the ball on the block, you know, then he's really tough to defend. So we got to try to force him away from the rim as much as we can. But that's easier said than done. You got four other pros on the floor too with him. So uh, we've got our hands full on that, and uh, we're still trying to figure it out. If you have any ideas, I'd love for you to share them with me, man. You've probably seen him a little bit more than I have. We can hand the mic back to him if you want <laughs> to comment on that uh, here in the middle, Coach. Uh, Jordan Hoffman, it's Abilene Reporter News. Uh, coach, you've had a, a little bit of a back and forth with Tex coach Chris Beard. Uh, just do you, have you talked to him about kind of what this is like and, and also how important is it to kind of keep it light this time of year and, and kind of keep things fun and, and everything after the grind of the, the season that you talked about? Yeah, I don't think there's any secret in Coach, uh, Coach Beard and I's relationship. You know, he coached me at Abilene Christian. He's my best friend, not just in the business. He's been my best friend for 20 years. Uh, this was a dream and vision we had years ago, man, when we'd go float the rivers with a bunch of old ball coaches. Some of these guys in the deuce, some guys are D3 guys. Uh, we have a really tight circle uh, that we've really kept close over the years. And this was a vision and a dream that we used to always talk about. He was the first phone call I had Saturday night, you know, and uh, he, he's had his run. He's had his eight seconds in Vegas. Vegas, man. He's, he's, uh, he's on a heck of a run right now. He's a heck of a ball coach. We saw that firsthand uh, this year. He's been incredible for our university. The last two years we played, he was an assistant at Abilene Christian. He got his master's at Abilene Christian, so he's taken some pride in this, I think. Uh, so, you know, the, the friendship's been great. Um, he doesn't have any answers for Kentucky, unfortunately. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think down the road uh, one day, um, we're going to have a heck of a story to share, you know, and um, I, I'm proud to I'm proud to call him a friend. I'm, I'm, uh, but it's not just basketball with him and it's life. We, we've been through a lot uh, together uh, the last 20 years. He's been right by my side and uh, we both had ups and downs. We both had a ton of adversity, but we finished the fight, you know, and he's he's doing a heck of a job. And I'm, I'm really, really proud of him Go on the front right here next. Yesterday. We're not going to play him anymore, though. We're done playing tech. <laughs> Coach uh, Gentry, asked us the Courier Journal in Louisville. Um, you know, knowing the kind of run your team was on this year and what you were capable of, how difficult was the decision to part ways with a couple of players fairly recently? And also, how proud have you been at the way your, your team appeared to respond to some untimely adversity? Yeah, I can't really comment on the situation, obviously. Unfortunately, I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, but, but, but what I will tell you um, is it was very tough. Toughest decision I might uh, have had as a head coach. Um, those two kids are they're, they're family to us. Um, they, they've been a part of the journey with us all along, um, and so it was tough. I couldn't be more proud of this group and how they handled it. You know, I think it's an incredible uh, lesson for our program, an incredible lesson for the country to learn that when adversity strikes, there's two ways to go. You know, you can just quit uh, and you can make excuses, or you can bunker down and fight. You know, and fight for what you want. And these guys fight, man. They 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 fought the last. I think what we we won six in a row. Uh, down the stretch. The double bye was really important to us because losing those two guys, we don't have the depth that we've had all year long. Uh, with those two guys, I thought we were probably one of the most talented teams in our league. Uh, without those guys, we weren't. So in our league, first and second place get a double bye. So that's huge. You get all automatically into the semifinals. And so we, we thought we had to go three and one down the stretch. Um, we had two on the road and two at home, and we ended up going 4-0, which gave us the double bye and gave us a great opportunity to just have to win two games, not three or four in our conference tournament. So incredibly proud of this group. It's, an, it's, a, it's a great lesson to learn. It's great for my two kids. I got a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old, and it's a great lesson for them to learn. Uh, it's a great lesson for our community uh, to learn uh, that when things don't go your way, you know you can still get what you want. Got about five minutes left here in the front. Howard, it. Um WKYT in Lexington. Coach, kind of a two-part question. In some ways, is all the, uh, the pressure off of your team as far as you guys can go out there and play loose and, and try to play the role of uh, the Cinderella? And also, have you had a chance to replace your suit that you ripped at the uh, selection show party? 
I, I think there is no pressure on us. Obviously, we're playing the University of Kentucky, you know. Um, so there is no pressure. The problem is we still got to find a way to score and rebound the basketball, you know. So we can go out there as loose as we want. It doesn't matter, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, it's University of Kentucky. Uh, so we're going to keep our guys loose. Um, I, I was laughing back here backstage. I've been trying to get Jalen Franklin to talk for four years. You know, he's our point guard. He's our leader. And he won't, he won't talk at all. You know, he just started talking a little bit this year. He gets up here and he, he won't shut up, you know. So uh, I, I think it's great, man, you know, that, that he's experienced. I think he's loose. I think he's having fun. And these three guys deserve it, you know. So I'm excited for them to embrace it. As far as my suit, uh, this, is a tr this is true, man. I'm telling you, my bonus, it, it's, all, it, it's all a fact, you know. And, and the suit got ripped when I jumped up and hugged our associate head coach. He's been with this journey for me for seven years. He took a chance on me. He left a really good program where he had a ton of success, and they made the NCAA tournament at Stephen F. Austin, which you guys are probably familiar with, to come here and build this with me. And, man, it, it has not been easy. It's been the hardest thing we've ever done. And it was an incredible embrace that we had the last eight seconds. Unfortunately, I ripped my pants. So I get back to Abilene. Uh, I haven't got my bonus yet either. I just found out I don't get that till June 1st, I think. So uh, I heard somebody's going to start a GoFundMe page. I'd appreciate it, you know, any help I can get. But um, I went, we got one suit place in town. That's it. One suit place. If they couldn't get it, they couldn't get it done. I guess you got to alter and do some stuff. So I got one suit, my man. I had two suits when the year started. I left one in the airport. True story. Had to go to when we played Nickel State and buy, buy a suit or khaki pants and a shirt. Uh, I'm coaching them all in my, in my baby blue suit, and I'm going to have a hole in my butt, man. So it is what it is, man. Uh, we're going to be who we are um, and uh, go out there and, and uh, embrace it. Good luck following this uh, with this next question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Maybe I should deny it. Daryl Bird with the Cats, Paws, and Lexington. You know, I'm just curious, what kind of impact was there at all tangible on your program and others like yours with what Loyola did as an 11 seed last year, what the 16 seed did for winning the impact for programs like yours? Yeah, let me tell you, uh, you know, Loyal Porter's a good friend of Steve Shields, my boss at Little Rock, so I got a chance to know him, and we got to embrace him in San Antonio. It was neat, you know, with the Final Four in Texas and get to see him, and what an incredible job he did and a great story um, uh, that, that he got to share with the world. Um, and so that was neat for a lot of us um, that, that are close to Porter. Uh, and then um, what UMBC did last year was awesome. K.J. Moore, their point guard, I don't know if you guys know this, he played for us as a freshman. We recruited him. He played for us. Uh, he ended up leaving us and going to JUCO and then and got to finish the story. So we were so proud of KJ and the experience that he l had last year. So um, I, I think those stories, um, I, I think they're out there. I think, you know, we'll, we'll share those with our guys. I think our guys have grown up, too, watching Mar Ma March Madness. I know what happens. You know, we could play Kentucky, I don't know, man. Ten, let's say 10,000 times we might win once, you know. But that's March Madness, you know. That's what, that's what tomorrow night's about, you know. If, if we can find a way to keep this thing close, uh, and, and give ourselves a chance the last 10 minutes, uh, you never know. That's when the madness happens. But uh, that's really hard to do, you know. I mean, every time you watch tape, I'm done watching tape. You know, I quit watching tape last night. Um, so uh, there, there's nothing we can do about it. We're not going to grow tonight. We're not going to get more athletic tonight. We are who we are. Uh, we just got to try to game plan, give our guys the best chance they can to compete uh, and see how long we can hang in there. Coach, we appreciate your time. Good luck to you. You got it, my man. Appreciate it. Jeff Goodman, man. What's up, bud? Good to see you again, man. Uh, coming up, practice for Abilene Christian at 11. Oh, let's see. Stand by. Practice at 11.45 for Abilene Christian. That's about 12 minutes from right now. And then LSU, the student athletes will be here at 11.50, followed by the LSU head coach at 12.05. Thank you.
All right, we've got LSU players. By the way, the LSU locker room is open for the moment. We'll have the head coach out here in just a few minutes as well. Um, let's start with any questions. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start here on the front right. Yes, sir. Uh, Sheldon Mickles, Baton Rouge Advocate. Trey, um, how far did you grow up from Yale in, in New Haven? Uh, and, and did you ever, as a kid, maybe think about playing there? Yeah, uh, I grew up about... Like, if I had a strong enough arm, I could probably throw a rock to, like, Yale's basketball facilities. And uh, growing up playing basketball, I didn't necessarily uh, think about playing them in the tournament. But it's a great feeling to be able to make it this far and be able to play against someone who's from back home. Follow-up to that. Um, uh, I've heard you played some pickup games against some of those guys when you were in high school. Do you remember any of them? Uh, I used to play on the same AU team as Azar Swain and uh, Jordan Bruner. He was a, um, a guy that was, I think he was on his way there like to start his uh, school process, but he had sat out one year. So we had put up a, a couple shots together. It wasn't crazy, but yeah. Next question, and the back on the right. Yes, sir. Reggie Chapman, uh, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. A uh, question for both of you guys. Uh, this team has, uh, their starting five has four players that are in average double digit scoring. Um, they're a high flying scoring offense as you guys are. Um, how do you guys plan to keep up or is it the mindset kind of the same? You're going to try and stay the same and kind of score as well. Scholar, you want to start us? Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, you know, when you see that balance on the scoring end, that means they really pass the ball well. So everybody's a weapon. And, uh, you know, we're just going to try to stick to our defensive principles and try to make shots tough for them. What about you, Tremont? You got anything to add? Uh, uh, yeah, we um, – obviously, like, when you come into this type of environment, you're going to play against guys who either push the ball, they slow it down. And, um, it's just a bunch of type of different, like, offensive schemes and defensive schemes. We can't shy away from what – what we've been doing as a program, we just got to continue to do what our jobs are and just keep doing what we do. Next question, we'll get a microphone to you. Anything here? Any other questions here for these two guys? We've got a few minutes in the back right. Yes. Um, WRZ, um, Mie Aoni, um, obviously a scorer, um, leader of this team. Um, what have you guys kind of seen from him on film and what makes him so difficult to guard? A uh, great player. He's uh, been an integral part of uh, a team that's made it to the NCAA tournament. So you can tell the talent that he brings. And uh, he's unbelievable in transition. So we're going to try to keep him out of that. And uh, again, just try to make shots sure hard for him. Next question. We'll get a microphone to you. We've got a few minutes for these guys here. The LSU locker room is open. And in the back right, one more time. <laughs> All right, so what have you guys learned from uh, the SEC tournament, obviously that loss against Florida? Um, where have you guys done over the last kind of week to try and re-prepare and refocus, um, especially knowing that Will Wade's not going to be here? Um, like we always say, uh, all season we've been saying that we're, like, we're a family, we're going to grow together, we're just going to keep pushing through everything that uh, all that adversity that's been thrown at us. But nothing has changed since the Florida game. Um, it was a game that we lost. We didn't... Uh, execute down and stretch and we know that we have to come together as a family even more now because we don't have our head coach. Coach Benford is our new head coach and everyone respects that. We we totally uh, love the, uh, the change up, Coach Benford being there, Coach GH, Coach Armstrong. But like we always say, we just got to come together, just be one and not let anything uh, break us apart. Yes, sir. Here in the middle. Mike, coming your way. This question is for both. I mean, not having your head coach, has it bonded you guys as a closer unit? I mean, what, what has it done to, to bring you guys closer as a basketball team? Uh, yeah, you know, the idea of family is when one person's down, the other person has to pick them up. So with our uh, the huge part of our team and Coach Wade, uh, with him being out, you know, we knew that we'd have to come together even more. And uh, we probably didn't show it as much in the Florida game, but looking at that film and learning from that loss, uh, we understand that that's going to be a big part of us being able to move further down in this tournament and uh, getting past Yale. Back into the right. Yes, ma'am. Um, now that y'all have worked with 
you know, Coach Tony and Hire and Armstrong as that collective co-coaches unit for a couple weeks now. How is how are y'all getting used to that in terms of, you know, only having it for one day for the first game? Well, well, they were a part of our coaching staff before, so um, they were just an extension of Coach Wade. But now that Coach uh, Benford is our actual head coach now, we everyone's looking towards him, and he's putting a lot of not pressure, but he's putting a lot of. Uh, trust into the players now and just holding each other accountable more because when Coach Wade was the coach, he had more say so. But now that we know we don't have him, everyone has been coming together. We've been in the gym shooting a lot more. Like we've been doing a lot of things together without the coaching uh, staff pretty much forcing us to do it um, through, uh, like throughout practice and stuff. So I would just say that they're, uh, they're giving us a lot more freedom to see what we're going to do. And, I always say we we stepped up to the challenge. We know that uh, games aren't going to be easy. We just got to go out, fight together, and be brothers. On the left side of the aisle. Yeah, I guess kind of following that up. I mean, with all the all the off the court stuff. I mean, how much do you guys think about that? Other than when you're in press conference here. I mean, during the day, between practices, between games, is it on your mind? And does it anger you? You know what people say about the program and and about your coach. Uh, I think throughout, I think there's been uh, a lot of outside stuff throughout the year, and I think we've uh, done a great job of keeping that stuff outside. Uh, um, you know, once we step on the court, and I think our record shows that, so uh, we should be able to continue to do that. And uh, you know, me and Tremont as leaders, we we trust all of these guys, and you know, we've developed a great bond over the year, and we expect that bond to you know keep us together on the court. Got a few minutes left. We'll go back in the right again. Uh, obviously, it's a different team than Florida. Florida more of a slow it down type of uh, offense, and this one more of a high high speed offense as well. I mean, Coach Bemper talked about how paint touch would be more important this game. I mean, without giving away obviously the game plan, but what do you think is more an important thing to kind of do in a game like this where it could be a shootout and down the stretch? Yeah, um, I would just say we have to get back in transition because Oni, uh, he's a He's a beast in transition. He likes to push the ball, get out, and uh, their point guard number three, he he pushes the ball a lot. And as long as we're able to stop those two guys and pretty much play everyone else solid, then I feel like we have a pretty good chance to win the game. Got time for a couple of more uh, here in the front. We'll uh, right here, Barry. I'm Scott Rappelay with the Baton Rouge Advocate, uh, Skyler. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but ESPN rated all the coaches by their their playing ability, and Coach Benford rated pretty high. Does does he has he ever ever told you about what a great player he was, and does he still have any does he still have any game? Yeah, he brings up uh, how, how back in the day he uh, got drafted by the Celtics, I believe, and uh, you know, he said he was kicking butt back in the '80s. Uh, but he he doesn't dwell on it too much. A long time ago. Ryan, I don't know if you got asked this earlier, so forgive me if you did, but. Being from New Haven, what do you know about Yale? Did you get recruited by Yale? Did you consider them? Do you know some of the guys said you might play pickup games? I don't know. Yeah, um, like I said before, it's a. Uh, if I had a strong enough arm, I could probably throw a rock to Yale's basketball facilities. And I actually grew up. That's where I started playing basketball. I, uh, my dad got a membership to Payne Whitney Gym, and that's like it was like the local. Uh, well, not local, but it was like their facility where everyone could go in if you had a membership. So that's where I started. Um, actually, one of my basketball videos, like my training videos, is actually in their gym, and that's when I wasn't being recruited by them, so it wasn't a violation or anything. So, um, yeah, I just grew up playing there. I, now that Azar Swain goes there, I actually grew up playing basketball with him uh, for the um, CT Elite Basketball Club. And just knowing that I'm, I'm from New Haven and that this team is from New Haven, it's just a, it's an honor to be able to play them in the first game. Uh, the, March Madness NCAA tournament. We've got time for one more. All right, guys, good. We're good. Thanks. Thanks very much. Good luck to you this week. Uh, Coach Benford will be out in just about five minutes. Thank you. And the LSU locker room is open at the moment.
All right, we've got Coach Benford from Louisiana State University. And if you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. The locker room is still open for LSU at the moment. Coach, we'll just uh, a few thoughts on the last few weeks and how it's gone for your basketball team. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, our guys have um, been great. They've been working extremely hard. We've had some great practices uh, the last few days, uh, really focused, uh, especially after the SEC tournament, you know, after the loss of Florida. Uh, we gave the guys a couple of days off, uh, came back, uh, had two really, really, I think, spirited practices. practices. Uh, uh, guys are focused, looking forward to the opportunity to play here in the NCAA tournament against a very quality Yale team, and uh, we'll be prepared to play uh, tomorrow. First question on the left. Yes, sir. Yeah, Jerry Carino from the Asbury Park Press. Uh, Tony Nasri's a local guy for us. Uh, what's, what's his development been like this year on and off the court? How has he dealt with everything that's been around him? Great. I, I tell you what, I was just talking to another media person about Nas. Um, you know, Nas has lost 30 pounds since he's uh, joined us in June, and he's worked extremely hard. Our strength coach has done a great job with him. Uh, everybody knows, we all know about his skill set, but he's been very coachable. Uh, he's got a high IQ. Um, he, very, he absorbs the scouting reports the, in our film sessions. He's really good. And he's, he, he, I tell you what, with our big guys, he's like a coach on the floor with our big guys. You know, he's been good defensively. That's one area I think he's really improved is defensively. You know, he's able to guard ball screens. And you'll see Nas, we'll match him up sometime on, on the wings. You know, he's guarding 6'4", six, 6'5", six, wings. So uh, we've been really pleased. I think he's a, 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 should be a lottery pick in my opinion. I don't see how guys have passed on a guy that size and that skill set. Back to the left side here, Coach. How we can say New York Post, Tony, given the unforeseen circumstances of the season, being thrown in so late, what does it mean having been a head coach so recently? Do you think it would be, has it made the adjustment easier for you? And if you hadn't been, would it have been more difficult? Yeah, I, I think uh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, you know, first of all, we, we have a quality group. You know what I mean? A group of character kids, and they've really bought in. Uh, they've really taken ownership of their team. Uh, they, they've had, unfortunately, go through a lot of adversity this year. Obviously, losing, uh, you know, one of their teammates and, and, and Wade Sims, and uh, that really made these guys uh, a tighter knit group, cl brought them close together, more trust and respect for one another, and it made it easy for us to coach them. You know, and they dedicated the season, dedicated the season to uh, to Wade Sims. So uh, that's the reason we were able to win. You know, in overtime, you know, we went six, uh, had six overtime games in the league, and we we're five and one in those games because of the closeness of this group. And for me to step in. Uh, Coach Wade really delegates, delegates a lot to our coaching staff. We have great, uh, great staff. Uh, Greg Hire, who's ready to be a head coach, he was at Wichita State. Uh, he does a great job, tremendous job. And then Bill Armstrong, who's in the SEC for 13 years. So that's made it easier having really good uh, uh, co I, I say we're co-coaches, but really other good coaches, coaches on the staff. And that's helped our transition and our relationship with our players. In the middle, Coach. Uh, following, uh, following that up, how difficult has it been for you to not only try to coach a basketball team, obviously, but keep players focused on basketball as opposed to everything swirling around the program? Well, and, go ahead. And I would, go ahead, and I'll follow up after that. Well, well first of all, we, we talk about narrow focus, narrowing our focus, uh, controlling the uh, – we, we can't control the outside noise and what's going on. All we can control is our locker room and our huddle. And the players, they've taken ownership of the locker room. And, that's, and they, they're, 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 they're holding everyone accountable, too. Uh, their teammates accountable too. So I think that's huge right there. When you can narrow your focus, uh, kind of got to put have tunnel vision, put blinders on. But they're aware of what's going on on the outside. But inside, when we walk in, in those doors, hey, it's about preparing for, for instance, Yale. You know, we got to prepare today, guys. We can't control what's going on on the outside. And just following that up, what are your, what are your thoughts about the program just being kind of shown in such a negative light? And, and what, do you have any sense for what players think about it? But also, what do you think about it? Well, I mean, um, you know, in college athletic things uh, happens, and that's just part of life, you know, in any, any, any walk of life, any profession, things happen. And uh, so we, we can't worry about that right now. We're just, I'm just focused on these, these kids and making sure uh, that we're prepared for Yale and make sure uh, that we go out and re represent the LSU the best way that we can at this moment. Another question? Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We've got a few minutes left with the coach. Any other questions uh, here in the front row? Yes, sir. Hey, Tony, I, I asked one of the players this. Uh, have you saw ESPN rank the coaches by their playing ability, and you rank pretty high. Uh, you like, you know, not Chris Mullen, but, but pretty high <laughs> coaches in the tournament. Uh, 
<laughs> I, was just, uh, I was just wondering if you if you had seen that. And, and uh, what do you, what do you take from your what do you take from your playing days to help you relate to to, to players and what they're going through, what they're yeah. thinking, that sort of thing? Because they're not always yeah. on the no, same that's, that's, page that's, as what you are. That's about a hundred pounds ago with that. <laughs> but anyway, I saw that. What uh, my, my my son said that to me. But anyway, um, I had guys uh, when I. I played my senior year in the well. I played a couple of years in the state tournament when I was at Texas. I played at Texas Tech, and uh, that my uh, we lost a teammate. My and I can really I really related this to my guys. We lost a teammate when I was in college. We he died while we were playing at the rec center on the floor. Had a heart attack and and and, and died. And we um, that brought that group. I still stay in contact with those guys. That brought us closer together. That group that I, I played with, and so and that's what I see with these guys. I shared my experience with these guys and. Uh, you can see, like you know, these guys have, uh, through the adversity, obviously the adverse situation with, with losing weight that we've gone through. There, a lot of people talk about being their brothers, brothers keepers, and and all that stuff. Uh, these guys are living it. I mean, they are true, truly uh, their brothers keepers. And so we we got to continue to um, stay focused and, uh, and 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 continue to stay together. Front left, yes, Tony. Uh, your history with the tournament, uh, you know, there's upsets happen, right? In these early round games, you're playing an early game tomorrow. What's your message to your team? How do you keep your team loose and not get tight as a top seed? Well, Yale is, first of all, they're well coached. I mean, Coach Jones is a tremendous coach. He does a great job. And, and, and those guys are, uh, you know, they have more experience. We have one guy that's been in this, <laughs> been in the term, that's Cavell Bigsley Williams. They have five that have played in it just recently, two years ago, and they beat Baylor. Uh, and they played Duke really, really close uh, that second game, I remember. But uh, uh, there is fishing. You look at their numbers, I mean, they scare you. I mean, they got, they, offensively, they're off the chart. You know, they really push the basketball. Uh, but also defensively, they're pretty sound. You know, I think they're they're, they're holding teams with 41 percent uh, field goal percentage. So uh, defense. So they're a quality team. But all we can control is is is, is what we do. You know, we're not going to change a whole lot. That's one thing I think is we kind of kept our routine the same. Um, you know, we got to do a good job of pushing the tempo. They want to push the tempo, uh, but we got to do a good job making sure we get back in transition defense and and get to their shooters. And they got some guys that can make some plays. Obviously, Oni and Copeland and. Uh, Reynolds all can make plays, so we got to do a solid job defensively. We got to be solid on our ball screen coverage or uh, on the defensive end, and, and then we got to rebound the ball. And then we got to do, we got to get on the glass. You know, we're one of the best offensive rebounds, in, uh, rebound teams in the country, and so when a shot goes up, we got to make sure we get on the glass too. Great extra possessions. Sorry, coach, we got about five minutes left here in the middle. Yes, uh, Tony uh, Gene, Gene Fournette from the Florida Times Union here in Jacksonville. Apologize if you have been asked this before, but as a coach, I mean, you've been obviously been thrown into a very unusual situation. So how do you as a coach impart to 19, 20, 21 year old kids trying to, you know, navigate this with all the outside noise that comes in with a situation like this? How, how have you how have you handled that with them? Well, like I, I, uh, earlier, I was just mentioning to a couple of uh, the, the members, the other members here is that we try to, you know, talk about um, Today we can't control what happened yesterday, but you know we, we're mindful of the fact that um, the uh, there is a lot of noise out there. You know that, but what we try to do is focus in on Yale right now. That's what we've done, preparing for Yale, and we talked about that. And, and we got uh, unfortunate guys have a great leadership and Scholar Mays, Tremont Waters. You guys just uh, visit with those guys. Cavell Bigsley, he's great, been a great leader for us. So we just really try to have tunnel vision and, and, and just concentrate on the on the task at hand, and that's to uh, play a really good Yale team. As a follow-up to that, has it become maybe a little bit easier now, you know, as time goes on, you know, maybe I'm sure the first few days that it happened, there, yeah. it might, there might have been a little more of a chaotic feel to it. Yeah. Is it become easier as time has moved well, on? Well, I don't know about easier, easier, but it's, it's, it's helped. I think we're settling in a routine. I guess that's the, 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 the uh, right answer to that. We're, we, we're, I think our guys, in, we haven't changed our routine at all, uh, you know, as far as our preparation and as far as uh, what we, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of time we spend with our guys and stuff. So I, I don't think it's uh, gotten easier, but it's uh, the guys I think now are accustomed that coach is not around right now. They're hearing uh, our, uh, my voice, Coach Hire's voice, and Coach Armstrong, and they understand that. And then, again, I just get back to the ownership. You know, I think every, every uh, championship team that I've been a part of, associated with, you've always, always about the players. It's been a player. They've been player. Uh, uh, players have taken ownership of their teams, and that's what our that's the reason we're able to win the SEC championships is because of our players. A couple of minutes left. Any other questions for the coach? Coach, good luck to you. Appreciate right. your time. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.
LSU practice will begin at 12.30. And then coming up next in the media room, the Maryland players. That's at 12.35. And the Maryland head coach at 12.50. Thank you.
two, three. Check, one, two, check, check, one, two. Check, one, two, three, check, check, check. One, two, check.
All right, folks, we got the uh, Maryland players on the dais. If you'll make your way over, we've got a few minutes with these guys. And then Coach Turgeon is right around the corner. The Maryland locker room is open. Uh, let's give it a couple of seconds, guys, and we'll get uh, a few more folks over here. Let's start, um, guys, just to, to get into the tournament here. You guys started, what, 16-3 and three in the second half, back half of the season. Take us through that and how you guys kind of rallied here down the stretch to, to move into the tournament time. How's it been for your team? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, we just, we just pulled it all together. Um, I think in the beginning we were still trying to find ourselves a little bit. Um, and then we kind of went on a little run. I think we went on like a six or seven game winning streak. Um, and then we started winning some games on the road, and um, we, uh, I, can't, I can't be I'm pretty happy about how the season turned out. Yeah. The, the road wins especially, I mean, that's, that's a tough way to get it done, to have to go out from College Park and go get those wins. But you guys did that. Definitely. How did that work? Um, we definitely have a, a young group this year. Um, but like I said, in the beginning, it was kind of rough. Everybody was still trying to find out their role. Um, and then we just, like I said, we just kind of pulled it all together. Bruno, what's the toughest part about going out on the road and, and having to get a, the job done away from College Park? Um, I would say probably the environment. Um, you know, you're not playing at home. You don't have our, you know, your fans supporting you. And, um, you know, I think just being able to play and, like, as loud as it gets in there and knowing the plays and everything, um, just hearing the coach and, 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 like, talking to your teammates, staying, you know, um, aggressive and keep the communication going throughout the team. I think that's really the key for us, you know, on the road to try to get the wins. Got a question here in the middle. Uh, if we can get a microphone here, we'll get going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Clayton Freeman with the Florida Times Union. Um, is there any difference in having to prepare for a team like Belmont in a situation like this where you didn't know your opponent until last night? Um, obviously, not a lot of time to prepare for them. Do what we do against any opponent. Um, obviously, Belmont is a really good team, uh, but I think we're just going to stand with our defensive principles, do what we do on offense, um, and then we just got to treat it like another game. I just thought on that. I think it gives us a lot, like, a lot more time to prepare and work on ourselves. Uh, like you said, they're a great team. Uh, you know, you got to respect them. By the end of the day, it's sort of about us playing Maryland basketball. Any other questions? Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Did you guys watch the game together as a team last night? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Any other questions here? We can get a mic to you. Clayton, you got another one? You good? Right, let's get a microphone to you. Hang on. You know, after the end of the season, you losing three of the last four, I guess particularly the uh, Penn State game and the um, Nebraska game in the Big Ten tournament, how do you, you know, bounce back from that? Um, and try to keep confidence as high as it can be going into the test of the NSA tournament? Um, I think we got to just stay positive. Um, that is a beauty in sport, and I think it's all talking about it. You know, there is always a next half, next shot, next game. And, uh, you know, we got a chance to play another game here. And uh, just us staying positive, I think our team is progressing, you know, as the game goes on and season goes on. And, uh, you know, just like, like I said, being here, being selected as one of the teams to play here, you know, it's kind of an opportunity for us to really leave everything else behind us and just focus on what we got in front of us. Any other questions? Raise your hand. We've got a couple of minutes left for the guys here. Everybody good? Hey, guys, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We're a few minutes away from uh, Coach Turgeon. He is uh, scheduled for 12.50. So about 10 minutes from right now, Coach Turgeon will join us here on the dais. Thank you.
All right, Coach Turgeon is coming up the stairs. If you'll join us in the interview room, we've got a few minutes with the head coach for the Maryland Terrapins. Turn your phone to silent, Coach. That's great. Thank you. Um, if you could uh, just start us off with uh, uh, some opening thoughts about your team and, and how you've gotten into the tournament here the last few weeks. Well, obviously, we're ex extremely excited to be here. Um, it's been quite a journey uh, for this young team to get to this point. Uh, I think we have the second youngest team in the tournament, uh, fourth youngest overall this year, and I, we played a very difficult schedule uh, in a great Big Ten. So it's been a great journey. We're really proud of ourselves and, and happy to be here. Um, and uh, hopefully going to be playing our best basketball uh, this weekend. So um, excited. Guys have been locked in uh, since the Big Ten tournament, had some really good practices, and, and looking forward to playing Belmont. Um, I've known Rick when I was a head coach at Jacksonville State 21 years ago and kind of watched him do what he's done over the last 21 years. He's been doing it longer than that, but since I came in his life, and I was really happy for him last night, great win for their team, and they got a heck of a basketball team, maybe his best team uh, that he's had, and he's had a lot of great ones. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Let's start here in the middle. Gene. Uh, Mark, Gene, Gene Fournette from the uh, Florida Times Union here in Jacksonville. Uh, expounding a little bit on what you know about Coach Bird, um, other than Mark, uh, other than uh, other than Mark Few at Gonzaga, there may not be a whole lot of other mid-major programs you could find that have the level of consistency that Belmont has had over the last 20 years. Uh, could you, do you think in some ways, even though, uh, even though Rick is very much appreciated by the coaches in the industry, that yeah. from, from the outside, there may be a lot of respect for what he's done, but maybe not as much of an appreciation because you know resources that mid majors don't have compared to the power fives. Yeah, I, I, obviously he's extremely well respected in our profession, um, and you know my relationship started. He, he, we were in the transatlantic and they were thinking about joining our league so we talked a lot when I was at Jacksonville State 21 years ago and and we talked and so I followed his career and then he was in obviously in Nashville with Kevin Stallings who was a friend of mine and Kevin you know used to get together with him and talk X's and O's and he always bragged about Rick and I've always watched Rick's teams play um, you know I, I guys make choices in life we all know Rick could have coached at the highest level of college basketball and his mind's so great, um, and his demeanor's so great, he could have coached at the NBA level, I'm sure, if the opportunity was right. So, But he chose to be where, he, where he's comfortable. Uh, I think what he's done the best is continue to recruit the kids that fit his style. Um, and obviously, he's a terrific evaluator um, and a terrific developer of talent. Um, it shows. So we all know his mind offensively is terrific. Um, you know, he ran a couple really nice plays last night after timeouts. Uh, uh, so we know he's terrific. So it, it is tough. And not on TV as much, um, all that kind of thing. So nationally, he might not be as well known, but I think the whole country was watching last night. So I'm sure that changed a few things. As a follow up to, as a follow -up to that, the game last night, uh, his leading score is 16 points under his normal average. Yeah. He gets outscored 14 to two in one run in the first half. Gets outscored 21 to five in another stretch in the second half, yet still wins the game by double digits. What does that say about the whole sum of the parts and, and the whole just being able to weather when you're not kind of at your you kind of has <clears throat> has some really bad stretches and yet yeah. still are able to win? Yeah, I, I think both teams went through that. Uh, but what I was most impressed about was Windler has two buckets. I believe, had the three early and then the back door play late. But he had 14 rebounds. He had three or four steals, you know, uh, a lot of assists. And he, he kept himself in the game. He, he impacted the game in a, in a great way. So that's why they're really a, a heck of a team. Um, but McLean stepped up. I mean, so uh, that's what happens when you have good teams and good players. Uh, they step up. But I thought defensively the last – 10 minutes of the game, they were terrific. And I, I think that was really the difference. Uh, they were able to guard them, guard the ball screen, 
uh, and rebound, limit them to one shot. And I thought that really that was the difference in the game and why they were able to pull away late. Any questions, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. <clears throat> Clayton, uh, right here in the middle. Uh, Clayton Freeman, Florida Times Union. Um, you know, after you know, the stretch toward the end, um, you, you lose to Penn State, you lose to Nebraska. Um, what are the keys to you know, keeping, the, keeping things on course and you know, making sure that you know, you're trying to prevent that from carrying over to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, we, we've worked really hard on making this a new season. And by the way my guys have reacted, I really, truly feel that way. Um, we've been dialed in in practice. Um, our enthusiasm level is good. Um, the Penn State loss, really, the score might be a bad loss, but they did beat Michigan there uh, also. They're a heck of a, they were a heck of a team late in the season. So um, we just didn't play well in the Big Ten tournament. That was a disappointing part for us. Um, so, and our other loss was Michigan, who's pretty good. So. People tend to overreact. Um, us in the know and in the middle of it, uh, we don't. We're disappointed in the way we played our last game, but we're excited to, to play well tomorrow. And um, I believe in my team. I, 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 I mean, this team has been through it, guys. We, we gave up a home game. We had uh, eight out of 11 in, on the road during a stretch in late January, early February, and we battled through it. And um, I believe in my team. Did we get a little bit tired? Maybe. Uh, we've been able to get refreshed and practice a lot, and you know, I expect us to play well tomorrow. Gene, right here in the middle. Mark, uh, Gene Fernet again. Uh, you've seen enough of Big Ten and ACC basketball to, you know, get the differences, uh, nuances of, of of how the styles are, are different in any way. But for somebody who's in a program who is that has been in both arenas, do you really recruit any differently? Whether you're going against the Dukes in North Carolina is on a regular basis or going against the Michigan States and Michigan's on a regular basis? No, and it's been this way my whole career, whether I was at Jacksonville State or at Maryland, you try to recruit young men that you can coach and young men that you think fit into your system. And um, I, I think that's the way we've all recruited. But no, nothing's different between, you know, we probably don't come down to the South quite as much, Atlanta, North Carolina as we used to. Uh, we still do, but not as much. It was when it was in the footprint of the ACC. We do it a lot more. Uh, you look at the history of our some of our better players and, and our history of uh, Maryland basketball, Virginia, North Carolina players. Uh, that footprint might change a little bit as we move into the Big Ten and, and in the future. But no, you just recruit the best players you can that, that fit your style. Any final questions for the coach? Thank you, coach. Right, Good luck you. to you. All right. That'll do it for us for a little bit. The uh, next press conference scheduled for 2.45. Kentucky players will be here then, followed by Coach Calipari at 3 o'clock. 2.45 for the Kentucky players. Thank you. Yes, sir. told us it's Higgins, uh, Keldon Johnson, and Tyler Harrell, 2, 3, and 14. That should There you go. Is the game live? It hasn't yet today. So <laughs> we never know. We don't, okay. There you go. Yes, sir.